Hello, and welcome to my kitchen. I'm a relatively new hunter, and I learned about sous vide cooking as a way to prepare my venison in a tender and delicious way. Sous vide is French for under vacuum, and it involves the use of a circulator keeping water at a very precise temperature. Sous vide cooking has been used for, in restaurants for years, uh, and now new technology allows us to sous vide at home. You start with a pot. Uh, I use my pasta pot. It just needs to be big enough to uh, cover the roast. We'll fill it with water, enough to cover the roast and allow for some evaporation. The next thing to think about is time and temperature. Temperature is for doneness, time is for tenderness. We'll set this at 130 degrees for a medium rare venison roast. It's a little bit lower than I would for beef, but that's because venison is so lean and cooks differently than domestic beef. For time, we'll cook this for 24 hours. Now it'll be done within about four hours based on its uh, thickness. It'll be edge to edge, 130 degrees by then. But the longer we cook it, the more the connective tissue has a chance to break down. So we'll cook it for 24 hours and we'll have a tender, medium rare venison roast. This is a circulator. There's several available uh, from about $125 to $250. Uh, mine works through Wi-Fi, so I can just set the temperature on my phone and I'm setting it for 130 degrees and then I'll start it. Now, um, I don't have to stay here. This is just good to go. So now that it's warming up, I'll start to work on preparing my roast. While the water's warming up, I will prep my venison for a rub by removing all of the silver skin that I can. Now, I always use the term venison, but this is elk, and venison is a term that I use for all wild game. So antelope, moose, deer, elk, it's all venison, and it's all perfect for sous vide. If you think about wild game, they're all lean, mean, climbing, migrating machines. That leanness is one of the benefits of eating wild game, but it's also one of the challenges of cooking wild game, which makes it all just perfect for sous vide cooking. The long 24 hour cook will break down that connective tissue and we'll end up with something very tender uh, and also medium rare. Now it's ready for the rub. Our rub is a garlicky herb rub. We'll start with two teaspoons of thyme and then one teaspoon each of garlic, marjoram, rosemary, and black pepper. We finished it off with a splash of olive oil, just enough to bind it together. So our rub is done, and now we can get to rubbing. Uh, you'll notice that there is no salt in this rub, and also uh, we use dried garlic instead of fresh. Salt with these long cooks can make the uh, meat more tough and uh, with garlic it's always a good idea to use dried rather than fresh. The temperature is too low and uh, so it's just raw garlic. It's not really cooking um, the garlic. So this is going to be a great flavor for our roast but then also we'll be using the juices from the cook to make um, an au jus. Our water is ready. We've made our rub and fully prepared our roast, and now it's time to cook. I use BPA-free freezer bags. Some folks use vacuum sealers. Uh, it's all what you have. So we'll put it in the bag, and then we'll just submerse it and let the heat, the weight of the, of the roast drive out the water. We'll then seal it and anchor it to the side with binder clips. Now if it, was, if it was floating, I would add another binder clip to the bottom and put a knife through it and that would help weight down the roast. Since this is a long roast, I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap to prevent evaporation. Uh, some folks use ping pong balls uh, to break that up, but uh, plastic wrap works really well. I'll do uh, three passes on this uh, and it will be good to go for 24 hours. And this third piece, we're good to go. And in 24 hours, we will have a perfect 130 degree medium rare venison roast. And we'll finish it off in a ribbon hot frying pan. Our roast has been cooking. 
or circulating for about 24 hours, so it's time to start the next phase. First, we'll remove the roast and let it rest in the bag juices for about 30 minutes. Now, we'll add the bag juices to a saucepan along with about the same amount of wine. You can use red or white. We'll let that boil and reduce while I sear the roast. Next, we'll dry off the roast so we can get a good sear. That looks pretty good. Now, we'll get our pan going. We want to get it ripping hot and we'll start with oil to fill the pores of the pan. We'll add butter for the flavor. Now that our pan is ripping hot, we'll add our roast and start to caramelize uh, and get a nice good crust. You can caramelize to your personal preference. The important thing is to get your skillet quite hot. Our roast is finished. We have that perfect 130 degrees edge to edge, medium rare roast. Our pan sauce is finished and it's delicious. For many hunters, the meat we harvest is precious and we feel an extra responsibility to take good care of it and not mess it up. If you're concerned about sous vide, my number one piece of advice, which was what I was told when I started, was to just go for it. Find a good recipe for beef, substitute dry herbs and aromatics for fresh and leave out the salt. Lower the temp a few degrees and just go for it. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen.